Hi there, my name is Kay Moon and I'm a Twin Flame Channel and Western Astrologer and this is a video about the full moon in Sagittarius taking place, uh oh did I share the screen all the way? Yeah, looks like I did, taking place on June 3rd, 2023 at 11.41 p.m. If you happen to be on the eastern seaboard of the United States, please check a time zone converter for your local time. This is the Twin Flame Divine Counterpart video update for this lunation and real quick just want to say if you happened to miss manifestation mastery this is your invitation to get a reading instead you have not missed the juicy manifestation energy of this season june really de denotes or uh demarks the transition into a new season so uh if you were hoping that that program would become available again this year, it is currently not on the list of scheduled programming for 2023. After this, we move into some other stuff. So definitely jump on board if you are wanting to facilitate and not know and understand your particular way of manifesting love, health, and money. A 30-minute reading is enough. You do not need more than that. But if you would like to have a conversation about other things, then I fully recommend the hour reading. All right. I definitely provided first look once again and the Lightworker Energy Update, the video that's published alongside this one on my YouTube channel. So if you're curious about where the energy goes from here, have a listen to the Lightworker Energy Update. It's chock full of rich context for what we're seeing play out between the divine counterparts. There's an extensive session section in there that's not divine counterpart specific, but that is love specific toward the tail end of that. And it'll be important for the divine counterparts to understand that energy since it's not uh, twin flame specific it is collective related and we are part of the collective i placed it there certainly have a listen it'll help you understand what you may be seeing play out in your connection all right so here's our full moon at the 13th degree of sagittarius opposite the sun there in gemini and overall this is a season that heralds an up level in leadership for light workers and among them divine counterparts and twin flames it is a moment of graduation with full details about what that means and what it could look like for you in that light worker energy update it's a major season a focus um, major season of promotion and where the focus is on transitioning out of the old and into the new and there's still a lot of this double worlding going on where there's like two realms sitting on top of one another I spoke about that in previous lightworker energy update videos and provided instructions there I provide instructions for how to work with that in the lightworker energy update as well in this lunation and I also talk about what to expect, why it's double worlds at this moment, um, and just how to work with it, right? Now, among the divine counterpart energies, there's going to be a mirroring of their up levels going on. So let's just move that. When it comes to their promotion, the divine feminine energy has illumination here from the sun and from the full moon in uh, Sagittarius, which is inviting her into leadership in her Gemini social circles, her sibling, cousins, neighbors, and soul family. That's the sign that she sits in and her communities in that way. And the divine masculine energy is conjunct the North Node, inviting this part of our fields into an unprecedented season of growth, expansion, and creatorship. But let's break this down even further for both of them let's go back okay our divine feminine energy field here she's also having um juno she's there juno the wife of jupiter she's having a conversation here with some major players there so she's got a conversation going on with chiron it's a sextile and chiron's in aries bringing her some support for her wisdom um and the opportunity to transmute her, an identity of woundedness into an identity of the wise one 
we've got Pallas Lilith sextile in Leo. So here's Pallas and here's Lilith having a conversation with her from the sign of sovereignty and creativity there. In We've got a trine to Chericlo right here having a conversation with her as well, air sign to air sign, Chericlo is the divine intercessor. And we've got a square from Nessus in Pisces here, mm -hmm. and a square to Ceres in Virgo. Here's Ceres in Virgo, and we've got a square there. The dominant influences are Chiron and Nessus together. Here's Chiron. Boom and Nessus because they are so close in degrees to where she sits. So she sits at the 19th degree, Chiron sits at the 18th degree, and Nessus also sits at the 18th degree of Aries and Pisces, respectively. And they can bring out an energy of ruminating on wounds and what's wrong with me in her fields or a little bit of obsession around making wounds work for us. Um it's really interesting because I was hearing stories of up level from all of my clients this week. And in a few of the such circumstances, you know, my clients were like freaking out about their up level. Like there were like, they told me stories of, you know, their counterpart all of a sudden wanting to spend all this time with them or um, of people coming toward them and really saying, yes, you, I want to work with you. And they hadn't even opened a business yet, but seeking them out for guidance and advice because their light had become so strong due to everything they had grown through. Um, I saw people get promotions at work. And in each of these situations, it was, it was troubling, endearing, but troubling that, you know, my client was like, well, you know, I just, I don't understand why I don't feel good. Like I just spent the last week kind of crying and kind of a shambles about all of this. Good things were happening, but they were so used to striving. They were so used to being without, they were, they had an identity of lack or an identity of not being chosen that when everything that they were striving for had moved from striving to thriving, there was nothing in their identity that could anchor thriving. There was nothing in their identity that said, yep, this is how it should be because this is who I am. And so this is a moment in time where the construction of that mindset, and here we go, divine feminine and the sign that deals with the mind, Gemini, the construction of that mindset is going to be really helpful for the divine feminine energetic fields, especially if you're finding yourself in a season of upgrade and promotion, you're going to have to, from your divine feminine energy, build a way to receive it. Now, again, we all know that everyone has feminine and masculine energy. It is not about your gender assigned or chosen or assigned or identified. It is really about just the way the energy flows inside of us. We have both. All of us were created with both. And so from the secondary influences, um, we have a large leadership theme and support from unseen forces. And our secondary next closest placements are Pallas and Lilith here. And this is the leadership piece from Leo. It's all about leading from our authenticity. And then we also have a trine from Chericlo, which is all about leading from behind, leading from within the group, from within the collective. So there's this leadership piece that's coming on and support Chericlo represents the unseen forces that are really carrying the divine feminine voice, divine feminine message, divine feminine agenda throughout communities on and offline. And so you may really see that during this season, you've been called into a place, whether you whether you chose it and strove for it, or people are now showing up in your inbox, just demanding it. You're called into a new level of light and leadership at this time, okay? 
And then the final influence, Ceres, and here's our friend Ceres here. The final influence speaks to a shift for the divine feminine energy fields in seasons, a transition from one stage of life into the next. And so this is really, it's incumbent upon us in our divine feminine energy fields to really <laughs> take some time and see where our mindset has shifted where we no longer think what we used to think and to be clear about that with the people we're communicating with share those changes provide those updates bring on those new projects so that people can participate in ways of receiving the light that we've been endowed with receive that light into their life we are transmitters and conduits of that light and of that love so exploring opportunities, Gemini is the sign of exploration, exploring opportunities to anchor that light and that love here in the third dimension is a big piece of what this is all about. And being in the place to just receive the up level, if it's been thrust upon you, you haven't necessarily needed to create it, but life has said enough with the cave work, <laughs> come out the cave and teach the people. If life has said that to you and now is the time for you to step up because people are really knocking on your door, step up. That's the invitation on the table here. You, you're, you have what it takes. You're ready. You're ready and it's time. People need, and even if you don't feel ready, the amount that you've got now, whatever that is, people are seeing it and they're hungry for it. And they're just, it's this thing of like, well, I don't feel like it's all the way put together, but it's put together enough for the people who are ready to take their first few steps in the direction that you've already grown through. So show them. Yeah, that's the invitation on the table. Okay. And if you're like trying to figure that out, definitely book a private reading with me. We'll do some one-on-one -on -one time and we'll have a look at your midheaven and your house of creativity and service to figure out what purpose looks like for you and what it is you can do to be of greater service as a conduit of love here on earth. Okay. You can book with me at Kmoon Astro. Link is below this video. Now we have the divine masculine energy there, Jupiter in Taurus sitting with the North Node. And Jupiter is also having some very interesting conversations. Jupiter is square to Pluto <clears throat> at the zero degree mark of Aquarius, Pluto representing power and Aquarius representing collectives and the people. We've got a square to Mars in Leo. And that is there at that eighth degree, a square to Mars in Leo. And Leo representing the sign of the queen or the sovereign. We've got a sextile to Saturn there in Pisces. And Saturn being about those boundaries and about integrity. And this Pisces being about our spiritual connection and artistic endeavors and we've got a square to Venus here in Cancer. Let's just move that. Let's do this. Venus in Cancer. We've got a nice squaring energy there. Venus being about magnetism and receptivity and Cancer here being about our emotional reality. What's interesting about this configuration influencing the divine masculine energy fields is that the primary influence here is Pluto. And Pluto deals with the cycle of death, integration or afterlife, and then rebirth, being born again, resurrection, being born anew. It's that caterpillar cocoon, butterfly. It's that lead goop gold. It is that water to wine movement. That's Pluto. Pluto governs these processes of formal state changes that facilitate a thing being unrecognizable in its new state. And so Jupiter has been having this conversation with Pluto for a little bit of time now, where the conversation for the divine masculine energy field is a complete state change from one person to another, like literally walking into a different identity here. 
And it creates a real sense of power with this transformation as well, because Pluto deals with power. Pluto also deals with fear. In order to transform anything, for many of us, there's some level of trepidation about, well, what happens when I really leave everything from before behind? Will it be okay? Will I be okay? And there's motivation here situationally and intrinsically from the Mars square to make it happen. And so you get Mars and Pluto and Jupiter, the divine masculine all together. And what you get is an overabundance of power coursing through the divine masculine energy fields that is demanding action and change from within to the outer world to shift the shape of the outer world to be the right configuration for their light work and their leadership and the shape that that is supposed to take. And so there's a, almost like a busyness here. The sextile to Saturn creates commitment and follow through that comes from a deeply spiritual place. And the square to Venus in Cancer here it acts like a bit of a greasing of the wheels that facilitates um facilitates a, a significant portion that square to venus and cancer of like just kind of like yes i can do it yes i can call it in it'll be challenging but i got this it'll be different and new but that's okay i'm ready this kind of energy is what's pulsing through the divine masculine energy fields and together pluto Venus, and then Jupiter, they make a T-square and T-squares create a significant amount of tension, a sensation of being pulled in different directions. And the way to work a T-square to ease the tension, to find the true direction when you've got three of four of a single mode occupied, and we almost have Leo fixed mode occupied there by Venus, but we've definitely got Pluto in Aqua. We've got Jupiter in Taurus. The answer is to vibrationally occupy with our choices and ourselves, because we're made of the same stardust. The choice we have is to occupy the energy that's conspicuous in its omission of the modes. And the fourth mode that has no planetary placement there is Scorpio. And so if we ourselves take on Scorpio mindsets, Scorpio behaviors, Scorpio choices, that's going to give us the answer for how we need to handle this pulsing of superpower, supercharged energy through the divine masculine energy fields. And for many of us, because there's such an endowment of power with this, ooh, and it is big. Like some of you may have felt it and it may have just made you tired. Some of you may have felt it and it may have caused some insomnia. You might not have been able to sleep. Some of you have gone into like super busy mode. Like I got to get it done, get it done, get it done, get it done. I'm ready. To, I'm ready. I'm ready. Oh, then the T-square also includes Mars. If we want to include Mars there, Mars is speaking definitely in Leo to this Jupiter there's this like, it's almost as if something that may have been running low, like on battery, like, you know, sometimes you see like a child's toy and it's supposed to have batteries for it, like a mechanical toy. You put the batteries in and they run down and then you see like either dis the display screen start to fade or the toy begins to mechanically move slower. This energy here is the equivalent of putting fresh batteries in that toy. And it, it's, it all of a sudden like powers up and comes to life and it's all online at the same time. And so with this, um, it's, it's, it'll be easy to diffuse the energy and just kind of like spread it all around chaotically, but there's an invitation to focus with this. There's an, an invitation to use this energy to really double down and focus ourselves on what it is we're here to create and then get about the business of just creating it. Okay. Mm. So with this, there's a lot of passion. 
occupying the Scorpio energy includes that, but occupying the Scorpio energy also means taking the necessary steps to facilitate closures, completions, and endings. Scorpio deals with that. To alchemize whatever it is that we have that's not quite what we want and change it, bend it to our will, make it what we want. There's an invitation here into Scorpio energy that's also about using that second chakra life force energy to really create a new, to generate a new, to take something and birth a new, to alchemize a new. Okay. All of this is about, you know, like commitment. There's some intensity, there's growth, there's passion, there's the cycle of life, death, and rebirth, the cycle of life here. It's gorgeous. I love this energy. I love this energy in the divine masculine energy fields. Anyone who was like born under a masculine sign or has Mars speaking to their son, regardless of their gender, you're going to feel this significantly, significantly. So that's really exciting. Now, if you're in a state, let's just talk about divine connections here. If you're in a state of experiences that you're labeling as separation, you may find that there's a quietness and an internal or individual focus calling each of you to dig deeper on the life changes that each of you are making to anchor your light, anchor your leadership. There's going to be changes in communities, which I speak about why it's specifically communities in the light worker energy update. There's going to be changes in um, work structure. There's going to be changes in the way you present yourself out in the world. And for those who are looking to change their connection through the lens or, or who are looking at their connection through the lens of union, right? So you can look at it either way. And the invitation I placed on the table, I think it was at the Divine Feminine's New Moon in Taurus um, about a month ago, was to really be clear, hang on, now what? I really did name this New Moon in Gemini. Y'all, forgive me. I'm not going to redo this because it's going to take too long, but this is the full moon. <laughs> this is a full moon in Gemini. It's just edit that for those who need to see it that way because it wasn't a month ago it was two weeks ago at the full moon uh at the new moon in this is a full moon in Sagittarius my god look at me yeah this is definitely the full moon in Sag I just finished doing the good grief I chart data full moon in Sag, let me fix that. There we go. Now we're cooking with fire. All right. <laughs> I just finished the uh, first look at the new moon in Gemini at the Lightworker Energy Update video. That's why I had it labeled like that. So forgive me. This is the full moon in Sagittarius. And under the light of the full moon in Sagittarius, if you happen to be looking at your connection, <laughs> through the lens of union. And I, my invitation to you at the last new moon, it was the new moon in Taurus, I believe was to have a look at your connection and maybe instead of calling everything that's not the perfect exact picture union, you widen the aperture and you call all of it union. Since you met, there's more union energy here than there was before you even knew one another. So for those of you who are ready to accept that invitation and you're looking at your connection through the lens of union, okay, you're going to see <clears throat> that both counterparts are noticing that the other one is changing big time. Like they just are not the person that they used to be. For reasons I outlined to do with Venus, but not directly twin or divine counterpart focused in the collective energy. Uh, over in the Lightworker Energy Update, I detail how, unfortunately, easy it might be to miss it, to miss that they are changing and project the past onto the present and then see your person or connection revert to a chapter that's long done, right? 
and to set yourself up to repeat that chapter because you're you're still too mired in the pain. You're still too mired in what it used to be. You're still too identified with who they used to be. And in doing that, anytime they try to do a new thing, you're just because in your frequency, you're just waiting for the other shoe to drop. Unfortunately, this can indeed cause a bit of forcing the other shoe to drop because we're in a moment of rapid manifestation. And like I said, I outlined why and how that is planetarily over in the Lightworker Energy Update. So have a listen to that if you want to understand the details. Uh, so definitely have a listen there, but I, because I share instructions on how to avoid the shadow side of, of, you know, the past repeating itself in the future with some of the stuff that's going on with Venus, because we're not supposed to be repeating it at this time. And in fact, there, there may be revelation around it, but it's revelation for the purpose of making some changes. Okay. Whatever you can do um, to notice, acknowledge, celebrate, and appreciate anything that's new in your counterpart and the way that they and you yourself are growing and evolving, do it. Stay in the focus and the appreciation of that to call in union with the new and union with your up level individually and with one another. Call it down with your attention, with your words, and with your appreciation, okay? Um, there have been more and more couples, I'm excited to say, who have decided to do couples readings with me. Those are the only version of relationship readings that I'm offering at this time where both counterparts show up and decide to get a reading to understand one another better and understand the connection and to really look at here's what we want to do here's what we want to create we don't know how to do it can you help us through that with the astrology here's how we want to understand each other or here's what we want to experience and here's our stuck point can you help us with that through the astrology if you are in partnership and you and your person Regardless of what stage or version of partnership you want to call it, you and your person want to show up and have me read for you in that way, the 90-minute couples reading will help facilitate a massive opening for the two of you around what can be done. And if you've had one of the couples readings and you're willing to share in the comments just what that was like for you and how that may have helped you or say one or two words, that would be great. Um, but yeah, it's it when we I can look at both charts with both people, this is one of the key ways that you're going to be able to see each other through different eyes, see each other in each other's wholeness. Because there's really in every chart blueprint, there's literally nothing wrong with the other person. There's nothing wrong with you. Now, sometimes you may not understand the build of another person, but what you understand the divine person of how that per how they were built and why they were built that way, and you can see it, it really blows your heart right wide open so that you're able to appreciate them and support them with the way that they're called to grow, which may not be the way you're called to grow. So definitely, if you're open to that, couples reading is the thing to do. This is a transitional moment, not all the way in the new. The old is dying out, but it's not all the way gone. It's a key time for staying focused and intentional as a divine creator incarnate with your time. Stay focused and intentional with your choices. Stay focused and intentional with your thoughts. Stay focused and intentional with your words. Stay focused and intentional with your schedule and the people around you. It's a good time to know and to remember how extremely powerful you are and watch that power unfold in real time with yourself and with your counterpart in your lives. Re you're really going to see an ability to create for yourself and your counterpart is amplified now. So go for it. Call in the new, call down the new, call it in for them, call it in for you, facilitate what's new 
through the mechanisms that we've talked about here. And like I said, if you missed manifestation mastery, definitely book a private reading. 30 minutes is enough to walk through your method of manifestation. You do not need to book a full reading, get the cheapest reading on the site. And that's a 30 minute. Okay. And we'll be able to work together to facilitate your new in that way. And if it's just not in the budget in the manifestation, um, kind of preview. It's a two hour preview. It's right here on YouTube for free. I give you the initial starting place for your, for your personal way to manifest with astrology. Have a listen to that. You can get great results just knowing that on its own. You don't need to know the whole, the whole full thing. All you need is to be able to work with the ruling sign of your fifth house. And that video walks you through it and what to do and how to work with it. So you can get on your way today. All right. And it's free. It's right here on YouTube. But if you're called to book a reading, you do know where to find me. I'm at kmoonastro.com. Link is below this video. If you heard something that resonated, definitely hit that like button. And if you find that you've been seeking me out every lunation, hit subscribe and the notification bell so that you get the next update right away. So excited to share all this with you. Take great care and bye for now.